Hello, Thomas Hill and Ericsson speaking to you from Gladstone, Queensland, where I'm currently doing feedback on local responses to accelerated change as part of the overheating project. Um, currently, I am uh, located about a 15 minutes drive out of Gladstone in the lush and beautiful and green and diverse rural area of Targini. And as a matter of fact, I'm standing on the corner of Wilson Road and Targini Road at the location of the shop. This is a shop. Well, as you can see, there isn't much left of it. It's just a slab. It, the shop was demolished some years ago. And indeed, as a matter of fact, the community of Targini was demolished some years ago. It no longer exists as a community. And I'm just going to give you a short version of the story about Targini. It's going to be a very short version. This is probably going to be a main story uh, in my later publications from the Gladstone region because it's very telling of some of the processes uh, that have led to a number of misgivings and ambivalences regarding development and industry. Now, Targini has been settled since the 1860s. So it's an old community by Australian standards. There was a cattle station here already in the 1860s. Throughout the 20th century, it was a vibrant, thriving rural community um, with a bit of mining, with quite a bit of agriculture. Uh, Targini was famous for the quality of its pawpaws and mangoes for many years. There was grazing, and uh, as the years went by, quite a few people from Targini were part-time farmers who also had jobs elsewhere. They worked in industry in Gladstone or uh, elsewhere in the area. Particularly, this became relevant after they got a bridge, you see, over the Calliope River, which uh, separates uh, Targini from uh, Gladstone in the early 1980s. So that's, uh, that's Targini, okay? A few hundred people, they had a community house. There was a church for Russian old believers because one of the um, main groups in Targini were old believers, refugees from, uh, from Russia via China, who arrived in the 1950s. So that's uh, how it was. Now, in the eight, late 1990s, uh, a, a shale oil company built a factory um, in Targini. There is shale oil in the ground here. At first, the local community were quite positive about this because, after all, they had thrived on the coexistence of industry and uh, agriculture for many years. But things soon started to go awry. Just a few days after the opening of the shale oil factory, people were complaining about running noses, red eyes, nausea and heavy uh, bouts of headache. And some were talking about a smell that hung in the air which resembled a mixture of fresh bitumen and burning tires, if you can imagine this. The problem didn't cease. People started to complain. They went to local government, uh, they went to the factory as such. A citizens group was set up which spent a lot of time campaigning, documenting, uh, measuring levels of noise, um, describing the quality of the air. The problem with measuring the quality of the air is that it varies. So uh, if you measure it uh, on a lucky day, say a morning uh, when there aren't any emissions or where the wind is blowing in a different direction, you won't, you won't see any effects uh, of the air. But people started to get ill, people began to, be, began to be worried, they felt that there'd been a serious reduction in their quality of life. Because after all, one of the attractions of Targini is its rural, peaceful, lush uh, location uh, outside an industrial city. Now much of that charm was gone. By the early 2000s, uh, the state government of Queensland eventually offered to buy up all the properties uh, in Targini and turn it into a state development area. Nearly everybody sold out. There were a few people who resisted. To my knowledge, there's at least one family that still lives on the land and haven't sold it. But uh, by and large, the land was sold. Some people are still around here. They are renting land, perhaps, uh, from the uh, state government in order to graze their cattle. Um, but it's not their own land anymore. And they're not... Uh, it's not a community. 
it used to be a community with children, with a shop, um, with a community house, etc. And now there's nothing left. Uh, the people of Tagini mostly got less for the property than it had been worth before the shale oil plant. But they felt that they had no other choice but sell. During the course of my fieldwork, I've been contacting a number of people who used to live in Tagini. Most of them have been happy to talk to me, but a few were reluctant, saying that what happened in Tagini about 10 years ago or a little more, it was so devastating to us emotionally and in every way that we'd rather try to forget it. Because it's not just a matter of losing a bit of money because you sell your property or your farm at a loss, it's also a matter of losing your memories, your home, your community. The Russian old believers who were based here are now scattered uh, around Queensland. Um, there was a living community here with neighbourly relations, with memories associated with the landscape, with streams, with the pawpaw plantations, and that is now all but gone. So the story about Targini is really a story, like so many other stories about industrial development, about local communities, somehow being sacrificed on the altar of progress. Ironically, in this case, failed progress. Tagini is an Aboriginal word, which means where friends meet. Well, let's hope that sometime in the future, friends will again be able to meet here. For now, it is a ghost town.